Right now, China has a monopoly on lithium refining. The Chinese government knows this. It knows this is a, a very powerful position that it's in when it comes to lithium and also battery metals. In addition to that, the materials used in magnets for EVs and uh, military hardware, all this stuff, China has a monopoly on it. However, the US is seeking to change that, and it's doing it one factory at a time. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. And I want to say welcome to all the new YouTube members on the channel. If you'd like to become a member, I'll put a link in the description below. There is a $1.2 billion lithium refinery that has just, well, they're just about building it right now in Oklahoma. At this point in time, I believe the only major lithium refinery in the United States is actually Tesla's refinery in Texas. However, Stardust Power, a US battery grade lithium product developer, has officially broken ground on its $1.2 billion lithium refinery in Oklahoma, which will be one of the largest in the United States. Interestingly, Elon Musk actually made this comment. He said, lithium refineries are a license to print money. I don't know if that's actually true, but it's interesting that he would say that. The facility will eventually be able to produce around 50,000 metric tons per year of battery grade lithium which is a lot. To be honest, it's not a huge amount in comparison to some of the lithium refineries in China, which are absolutely enormous, but this is a pretty impressive facility. Stardust Power actually completed and announced the acquisition of its 66-acre site in Oklahoma. And they said this, with the land acquired and necessary construction permits secured in 2024, we are excited to break ground and begin construction. The refinery will be developed in two phases. The first will construct a production line capable of producing 25,000 tons or metric tons per year. The second will add another production line with the same amount, meaning the total then will be 50,000 metric tons per year. I guess people might've been curious why they're building this facility in Oklahoma. It's not exactly near the coast, it's sort of, is it logical? Well, I mean, the truth is that it does make sense because they don't plan on exporting this lithium. This lithium is intended for domestic production, for domestic use. So the Connecticut-based Stardust Power said it selected uh, Oklahoma because of the state's central U.S. location for delivery and shipment. Muscogee also has, well, the Muscogee is the actual location, has a skilled workforce trained in oil and gas engineering who should be, you know, should be able to retrain them relatively easily, they believe. Now, it will use Port Muscogee on the McClellan Kerr Arkansas River navigation system to ship lithium brine water to the refinery, where it will derive the lithium and then use the same inland waterway system to ship battery grade lithium out. Kind of interesting. Roshan Pujari, founder and CEO of Stardust Power, said currently there is no large scale refinery for battery grade lithium in the United States. When fully operational, our new lithium refinery will both speed America's energy transition and boost Oklahoma's local economy. Now, when he says there's none, I mean, I'm guessing he means there's none this big. Stardust Power Refinery is expected to be eligible for up to $257 million US dollars in state and federal economic incentives for the facility's build out. So that's going to be a huge part of where they're going to get the, the funds from. A lot of the funds to build this project are coming from the government, both state and federal. The company said it expected to break ground in the first half of 2024, but it's officially broken ground in January of 2025. So can you invest in the company? Well, apparently Stardust Power have, um, well, they're set to list on the NASDAQ through a SPAC deal with acquisition company, Global Partner Acquisition Corporation. If you're interested, they're called Stardust Power Inc. And that is SDST on the NASDAQ. Their share price actually has collapsed though. Since they launched, it was sitting at around 11 US dollars. It then jumped up to a crazy number of 24 US, $24.47. Don't know what happened there. Something triggered it. And then it's just slowly fallen uh, week by week by week to the point where it's now at $1.22, which is a fraction. I mean, that's 90% less than what it originally floated at. So it could be a really good deal or it could be something funny going on here. I don't know. Guys, what are your thoughts? Do you think this uh, company is worth investing in? Is this a potential opportunity? 
Uh, does anyone know the reason why this stock price has basically crashed for a, a business that looks like it's actually doing something? Maybe they're not though. I mean, maybe there's some concern here. There's gonna be another canoe where they promise something and basically get the money from the government and then don't actually do anything. Is this possible? I mean, it could happen. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Researchers here in Australia at the university that my sister went to for many years had discovered a way to double the energy density of lithium batteries. Now, not quite double, but pretty close to double. They used an unusual ingredient in order to get lithium sulfur batteries to have an energy density which is essentially on par with the batteries from CATL. You know, CATL is condensed battery with an energy density of 400 watt hours per kilogram, which is being used in jumbo jets. Yeah, the same as those. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Guys, if you feel this video provides you value, then please subscribe as a member of the channel. It's great to have members on board and obviously it supports the channel. Really appreciate you. I'll put a link in the description below. The highest energy density batteries currently being used in aircraft right now are the condensed battery made by CATL. Now, those are pretty exotic batteries. Kate will say that they'll be in EVs within a few years' time. However, they aren't cheap. They're relatively expensive. But a lot of people, including myself, believe there's many other options that will come into the market within the next few years as well to be rivals. And these other options will give electric cars a range of well over six, 700 miles. Easily, easily. I mean, think about this. If you doubled the energy density of, let's say the, the battery in the car that I have, the Xpeng G6, that would give it a range of easily, I'm talking 1,200 kilometers. So this is what we're looking at. And this is pretty amazing. We're going to see really fast charging. We're starting to see 600 kilowatt charging come out in various different electric cars in China. And we're going to see energy density like this. It's going to be the death knoll for internal combustion. Researchers at Monash University in Australia have developed ultra fast charging lithium sulfur batteries that are using an interesting ingredient to massively increase energy density. The newly developed batteries have t around twice the energy density of lithium ion phosphate batteries. Now, to give you some context, they're not double the energy density of Tesla's 4680 battery or other batteries that are similar to that, they're, but they're you know not far off that. The 4680 battery is considered to be at a potentially around 260 watt hours per kilogram. These are 400. It's a huge difference. Lithium sulfur batteries um, have been talked about a fair bit, but the truth is they were actually invented two decades before lithium iron. 20 years before we had lithium iron batteries, we had lithium sulfur batteries. But the limitations of internal chemistries resulted in lithium sulfur batteries kind of not progressing in the same way that lithium iron batteries did. Among the shortcomings or the problems with lithium sulfur batteries are reduced power delivery and fewer charge cycles. So the biggest problem was the longevity, right? They just wouldn't last for long enough. 